By the time this show airs, I may have already put some of this stuff to use. I've ordered some heat sinks and some push spring terminals. I want to use in things like a power supply circuit and some other things where I need a way to more quickly plug and unplug wiring on boards. So here we have our standard TO220 heat sink and it's relatively large. That should help keep those devices relatively cool. And I've got two pin, three pin, and eight pin versions of this KF141 style push-in spring terminal. So it looks like I have right angle ones for the two and three pin. They would go into the board and the contacts are right angle. But the eight pin, it looks like it's a vertical mount, so you put it in the board and the wires go in through the top. And these aren't end-to-end -end stackable to easily create extra long rows of pins. There's this extra gap in the middle, and each contact point also has two pins that are in common. So at least that gives it extra mounting mechanical strength in a circuit board. The way it works, you just push back on these and then insert the wire and you've got this fast method of connecting or removing. A couple of packages that are possibly indirectly related. Some ICs and some audio jack adapters between dual RCA phono style to a mono quarter inch plug. The chips are CD4053 analog two-way switches. So you can have one analog signal and switch it between two other paths. So that could be used for signal routing, like taking a signal, whether it's audio or something, and switching it between two different inputs. It's going to be possibly put to use in the ongoing audio octave effect project. And for these RCA jacks to mono phone plugs, just something to have around when you need to adapt signals. So depending what I'm doing and if it matters if it's mono or stereo, I can just plug this in here and use this to go from mono quarter to stereo eighth. So we don't want two outputs like left and right audio driving each other into a short circuit to make it mono, but it's just an example of you can have all kinds of cables and plugs all over the place. Sometimes you do need to adapt. Even if I'm just using one channel here to go from RCA to phone plug. So let's just check. So sleeve goes to each sleeve. And then tip, making sure there's no shorts. So these two RCAs are basically in parallel. So maybe what you would do is have one signal on this plug that you're sending to two different places. One of these combined choice delivery shipments. Sometimes they put envelopes and sometimes they put just unwrapped stuff in the bigger envelope. Oh, this looks like the soldering iron tip tinning container. And these little brushes, I think it was a pack of 50. I think this was one of those pop-up things again, where they offer you a bunch of stuff slightly cheaper. If you order at least three, you get free shipping. So I just chose these items. So I figured in case you ever need to kind of suction some sort of liquid out of one spot, drop it somewhere else, if you're doing some sort of experimental thing, or if you need to actually pick up some sort of small amount of liquid that went somewhere. Maybe you want to transfer some stuff between containers in some small amount, whatever the case may be. Maybe this could be used as an applicator to get it in somewhere else that you can't reach. Why not if it's on sale? And these brushes, I figured if there's 50 in a low-cost package, they could be considered disposable one-time use for things like if you need to spread epoxy or some other glue, wood glue, 
and possibly even flux for copper pipe plumbing sort of applications of flux if you don't have any of those proper acid brushes. As long as it doesn't eat away the bristles and you just use it quickly and throw it out after the job. And maybe they can be used as a way to clean dust out of certain areas on circuit boards or other things that you might open up for servicing. Repair of iron head. I'm gonna say that's soldering iron tip tinner. The ones I used to get were larger diameter, so I'm not sure how well this will work. There's an iron tip as it is right now. This material is a lot softer than what I recall. It looks like it's about to crumble. I wonder how long it will last. Well, it made it shinier, so whether or not it's actually cleaning, maybe I'll see over time. So we'll see how that goes. Modules. These look like the ADS1115 16-bit I2C analog to digital converter modules I recently ordered. I ordered five of these because I basically needed four. I know I've ordered at least two in the past over the years, but I can only find one. Each of these has four analog inputs and they have one address select pin for I squared C, but you can get four addresses out of that one pin by connecting it either to VCC, ground, or to serial clock or data on the I squared C bus. So that way you can actually get 16 channels on the one bus, which is something I want to try to do. I tried looking up how does it actually use the clock and data pins on the bus to help set an address. I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but I couldn't find information on how it's done. But in one of those forum posts, somebody mentioned how it would have something to do with the way the rising and falling edges go on clock and data as new packets are received. For example, let's say the clock line transitions high and then transitions low, and the address pin is connected there, and it also is being read and it goes high and low at the same time, then they know they are connected to that pin on the bus, so they utilize a certain address in there. And then when that data actually belongs to that address, that module will respond. Something like that. It'll just know the address pin is connected to one of the I squared C pins and just use that as an extra address. So we get four addresses, 16 channels. And this was another one of those spontaneous purchases. Pocket scale for measuring small weight capacities in various units. Takes a couple of AAA batteries, and according to this, this one can do up to 500 grams. I think when I was reading the options available, if you get them able to read higher weight capacities, you might lose some resolution. So I thought, if I need to measure the weight on relatively light objects, I probably don't need it to go up to a kilogram, so I'd rather have a lower capacity, but more accurate, if it actually is accurate. So the cover just comes off. A couple of AAA batteries. I have some rechargeables here. If I take one of these modules, 1.53 grams, so it can do different units. I don't know what they all mean. Different kinds of Variations on ounces, maybe carats for jewelry. Up till now I've been using this kind of a kitchen scale. If I throw the module on here, it's only going to say one gram because it doesn't even have any decimals of precision. So I used to use things like this. For example, if I need to mail a letter that has multiple sheets in there and I don't know if it's going to be more than the maximum weight of a stamp, or if I have to add an extra stamp. So I would throw the envelope on here and just see and double check on the post office website if I should be able to get this through with one stamp or needing two. So that box, seven grams on this scale. If I bring this one in, 7.43. This iron 
conduction tip cleaner says net six grams. Well, we got 9.2 grams, including the container. So some more useful utilities, accessories for general workbench, ongoing operations, some more parts for projects, trying new things like these connectors with push pin terminals. I'll have to see if I want to standardize on these or maybe just use them in specific applications. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make this possible.